So folks, today I'm out on the Sand Barrens, not to discuss botany, but I'm uh, trying to expand my range a little bit, you know, new year, new me, as they say. So today I'm actually going to be uh, trying to document a little bit of mycology that's going on in these, these nice Sand Barren type habitats. As you can see, I'm probably like, only like uh, less than half a mile away from the lakefront where I'm at right now, so I'm on a pretty young dune face but I've got this nice blowout here and it's got an awesome community of this one species of mushroom uh, Astraea smithii and what we're going to do in this video is we're going to get into a little bit of the uh, the taxonomic uh, and phylogenetic history of this mushroom as well as uh, just some cool facts about it because it's a really cool species of mushroom and you know it's pretty awesome to get to see it especially because you wouldn't really think of a uh, a mushroom really flourishing in these uh the sort of a drier sandy habitat but you know uh you know as uh jeff goldblum said in jurassic park uh life finds a way so uh let's get a zoom in on the, one of these astraeuses shall we so i've grabbed three individual uh astraeus smithii or what i believe to be astraeus smithii individuals for us to get a gander at so i can talk a little bit about the uh about the uh, vocabulary used to describe uh, the different parts of this fungus, and uh, I'm going to talk about its uh, its life history a little bit. You know, so uh, this white part on the center there, that is, I believe that's the endoperidium, and the endoperidium it's also called a spore sac because that is the uh, that's the organ that actually houses the spore. So you might be wondering what these rays are. Well, they're kind of these this almost like woody like protrusions, and we'll talk about their function uh, when I start discussing the life history. But uh, they're these kind of funky wood like protrusions. They're not wood, they're probably like a chitinous material or something of that nature. But anyway, that's the exoperidium, which is the, uh, the outermost layer of tissue. So the life history for this mushroom, the way it goes is it's a, it's a, um, uh, shoot, I think it's an ectomycorrhizal fungus, which basically means that it's symbiotic with this oak tree right here, which is why when I look, when I was searching for this fungus, I was searching for oak trees because as you can see, I'm highlighting there with my finger, there's a nice big pile of them. That's Astraea, that's Astraea smithii, because of course, being uh, symbiotic with oak trees, you're going to find them in close proximity to one another, because they've got the, uh, the ectomycorrhizal relation, which basically boils down to the, uh, the mycelium of the fungus gives the roots of the, uh, the oak tree, in this case, phosphorus, which is a very important macronutrient in plants, and in exchange for that, uh, the fungus receives photosynthetic products, mainly sugars, uh, from the tree. So that's the, uh, that's kind of how it works. But then, so, when it starts to fruit and produce these, these are the fruiting bodies of the fungus, um, when it starts to fruit, the mycelium will produce this roughly spherical-shaped fruiting body, okay? And it'll be, like, slightly attached to the mycelia, but as it matures, it starts to split away, and this is where the exoperidium comes in, because the exoperidium also, during that maturity, unfurls into these ray-like protrusions, which allow the fruiting body to emerge above the level of the substrate and actually show off that spore sac to the world and then release the spores. Very, very cool. That's the life history, as well as uh, why, why when you're looking for part, why when you're looking for symbiotic organisms that are kind of, kind of teensy and hard to find, it helps to look for the big partner. You know, makes it easier on you. So something pretty, uh, pretty interesting in my personal opinion about the Astraeuses is, is their, uh, their common names. Now these are called uh, barometer Earth stars because once exposed to the surface, these um. These, uh, the exoperidium, the rays, will actually open and close around the endoperidium, the spore sac. Uh, when, humidity, when the humidity is high, it'll open up. When humidity is low, it'll close up to ensure that the spores are uh, dispersed at the right time, at the right, the optimal conditions for reproduction and growth, basically, as well as to uh, prevent dehydration, which is pretty cool. Another common name they get is uh, the falser stars because um, they look very, very similar to another genus of mushroom, the truer stars, the genus Geastrum. However, these, uh, these two lineages of mushrooms are not very closely related. In fact, you'll, if you look it up, you'll see that the uh, Geastrums are in the order Geastrales and the uh, Astraeuses are in the Bolitales. So two uh, pretty disparately related mushrooms are taking up this same habit. Uh, might be a result of convergent evolution, not exactly sure. But uh, with that cool fact out of the way about the common names, I'd reckon it's time for phylogeny time. 
So now if you were out here just say as a uh, just a curious observer and you took a picture of one of these mushrooms and you threw it up on iNaturalist, what the iNaturalist algorithm is going to give you is going to be Astraeus hygrometricus, which is uh, kind of incorrect in light of recent scientific literature, basically. So there's a paper in 2006 not 2016, my bad, 2013, a, uh, a research paper. And what it found was that Astraeus hygrometricus was a species complex. Now what's a species complex is the next natural question you're going to be asking. Well, I'm only too happy to tell you. A species complex is basically, it's a group of organisms that are very closely related and so they resemble each other to a very very high degree so the differences in species boundary are kind of difficult to parse out and so basically that 2013 paper it looks at the molecular phylogenetics of a whole bunch of different samples that were labeled as Astraeus hygrometricus finds them to be significantly different in terms of their uh, their DNA and splits them up into different species and I can tell that this species is Astraeus smithii based on the distribution location that was described in that 2013 paper as well as the habitat type which was described in that paper because for both the uh, the type specimen and another specimen which had its genome sequence to not its genome sequence but had uh, had molecular phylogenetics done on had its sequence confirmed to be Astraea smithii I should say um, they were both found in sand dune complex habitats, which is exactly the same as what I'm in today. So I'm pretty confident in calling this Astraeus smithii rather than Astraeus hygrometricus, and uh, that's due to uh, that's due to the constantly flu fluctuating nature of science, which is really rad, as I mentioned in, uh, in numerous occasions on this channel. Probably, God, what a cool fungus. Anyway, there you go, folks. Astraeus smithii. Isn't it beautiful? The Blackfoot, uh, Blackfoot indigenous people used to call these fallen stars, which, you know, you can kind of see. Huh, how about that? Anyway, have a good one out there, folks. I hope this video did this justice. Make sure you check out the paper.